Uh, my name is David Ford. I'm the co-editor of iHeartBritishTV.com and the co-author of the British TV Streaming Guide, U.S. Edition. I'm here with the stars of the Broken Wood Mysteries. Hi, David. Kia ora. Uh, um, I'm Neil Ray, and I play Mike Shepard in the Broken Wood Mysteries. And I am Fern Sutherland, and I play a detective Kristen Sims in the Broken Wood Mysteries. So I'll just start off with some questions, if that sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Bring it on. Okay. <laughs> So to begin with, um, for those who, who've maybe seen the Broken Wood Mysteries on Acorn but never given it a try, can you share a little bit what the show's about and what you think makes it so special? The Broken Wood Mysteries is a murder mystery show set in a small town, small fictional town in New Zealand. The, the, the town is peopled by a bunch of crazies. Um, <laughs> kind of us included. We say lovingly. It's sort of um, set in a small town that I think probably everyone can relate to. So. Yeah, it's a small town of, uh, you know, 4,900 and population dropping by, you know. Dwin <laughs> rapidly dwindling <laughs> as we speak. Mike, how nice to see you. Uh, we did just speak a few hours ago. Yes, but here it's always nicer. Do you have a favourite location that you filmed? I always love filming on the ocean. Uh, any opportunity to get on a boat and, um, you know, take a small kind of crew off um, on, a, on a breakaway kind of mission out in the harbour mm -hmm. somewhere, I just absolutely love it. Like, it just seems like it, that shouldn't be a job that someone's allowed to do. It's way too much fun to, to get paid to do something like that. We often film in winter, so while they... Um the locations often might look pretty, often they... <laughs> <laughs> we are profoundly uncomfortable. <laughs> They're quite cold. Or why is that? It's just, I think it's just unluckily worked out that way for us in terms yeah. of the overall production schedule of South Pacific Pictures, where just, it just kind of falls in that part of the year each year. Yeah, I, th I think there's something about the winter that adds to the kind of mystery or mise-en-scene of, mm. of the production. There is a coldness and a blueness to some of it, but there's the, the weird thing about Broken Wood Mysteries is that it has those kind of slightly scandy elements, but then it's got a kind of jaunty sense of humour along with it. Yeah, it's quite an um, hard balance to strike, I think, tonally for every department. You know, it's, yeah. a, it's a, quite a hard line to walk. You never want it to get too earnest or too um, navel-gazy or dramatic. Mr. Oates, are you sure? Wait, that... are you talking to him or me? We don't want people to feel bad when they're watching the show. You want to watch a nice, jaunty tale of homicide <laughs> and feel good about it. Or what do you think you guys do to kind of soften some of the, what could be some of the harder watching elements? Um, I think first off, it starts with um, Tim's script, really. He, he's very wry and deadpan. What happened here? How did you end up impaled? Burnishes some of the hard edges. Well, that was good. Yeah, really good. Burnishes some of the hard edges. Right, yeah. I like that. That was the idea. I mean, whoever had the idea, that would have been the idea. Do either of you identify with some aspect of your characters, and are they similar to you in real life in any way? Yeah, I think absolutely. I, I always identify with some aspect of my character and a bit of who I'm playing probably but um I think I identify with Kristen's um gung-ho sort of an attitude I think she's quite an impulsive person that maybe doesn't sometimes think before she does what happened in there Devin who are you with uh, I actually, I don't know, I really look up to Kristen a lot, a lot of ways. I think she's very courageous. Uh, I've always thought of Mike as a kind of, uh, as my older, more sensible brother. Um, <laughs> it is, is actually how I've always thought about him. I think it, there, he certainly has some qualities that I wished I had. The, wish that I kept my own counsel a bit more and was a bit more maybe diplomatic at times <laughs> than, than I am. Did both of you set out to be actors? Um, I didn't actually. I, I have an honours degree in history and I plan... Do you? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> sitting here with a scholar. <laughs> uh, my plan had been to be an historian and go work. Um, there's a thing called the Waitangi Tribunal in New Zealand. My um, elder brother is was an actor and I just kind of, I, I finished at uni and I went, oh, maybe I'll just do a couple of shows before I, you know, try and get a job and then 
And then we went, oh, maybe I'll just go to drama school. And then, you know, basically, actors' parties are better than historians' parties. <laughs> <laughs> for me it was very much uh, I knew what I wanted to do the whole time I was at high school it was always my plan to go to drama school or once I um, uh, hooked up with a, a drama teacher there who was excellent she was so um, she was such an excellent actor and so inspiring and wonderful and so I just went I want to do whatever she did to be her and so I set about trying to get into drama school and um which is weird because I actually have terrible stage fright and I for a really long time wasn't <laughs> mum and dad used to go God, I just I don't think in the nicest possible way that this is for you like you're not very good and you seem petrified um so it took me a while to get through that and I still have occasional bouts of it for sure but um mm. but here I am oh that's, that's petrifying <laughs> Yeah. Oh, particularly going on stage, God. Ugh. Ugh. Think about it. Ugh. Serotonin, it's a chemical produced by nerve cells. Widely believed to contribute to feelings of well-being and happiness, although actually far more complicated. You read this on Wikipedia? No, I just happen to know. <laughs> so, Neil, you already mentioned something, but I was going to ask both of you, what is something viewers might be surprised to learn about each of you? Oh, I got two things. We were just we were just discussing this. I've just started doing yoga, <laughs> and and I play field hockey. There you go. So he's an athlete, is basically what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, right. I I'm a very avid Muay Thai kickboxer. Mm. Is that surprising? I don't know. Probably. <laughs> so our warm ups often will have fights. I'll have a hockey stick, and um, yeah. Fern will be he's trying to kick me in the head. Yeah, just a few elbows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, yeah, we're both lethal um, athletes. Yeah. Do each of you have a favorite episode? Um, I think my favorite episode, it's unusual in that there are sort of two separate storylines going on. There's an A and a B, um, and the B storyline takes Mike out of Brokenwood to go and deal with something that's going on in his personal life. He's got some big shoes to fill, and it's an opportunity to prove herself. That, that B storyline that Fern's talking about is kind of interesting in terms of for this kind of episodic television because it's resolving a storyline that happened in seasons one and two. I kind of quite liked, was it, what was their dog day? Oh, uh, episode three, yeah, that was great. It was called Dog Day Morning anyway, and this, um, the Brokenwood Savings Bank is robbed by four very similar looking men wearing dog masks mm. who um, whose car then runs out of petrol and someone is accidentally shot and killed. It's the worst bank robbery in the history of bank robberies. Um, yeah, but it's very funny. And it's written, it's co-written uh, by um, Nick Sampson, who plays Breen. So um, it's, uh, Nick's a comedian. It has a lot of uh, Nick's signature humour. Yeah, through. and it was really fun because it was quite... Um, the pace was quite hectic and there was a lot of running around and stab proof mm. vests and um, yeah, it was just a fun, it was a bit of like I got to do some stunts and yeah. stuff like that, which is always quite fun to do. What would you order from the Frog and Cheetah or Frodo's Cafe? Um, I would order from Frodo's. I would order, I, I, I believe he's got Mrs. Marlowe's um, cheese roll um, recipe. Um, so I would order a cheese roll, which is a which is a delicacy made in New Zealand in the south of New Zealand, around Dunedin, which is basically slabs of cheese rolled up in bread, melted. Oh, there you go. Now you're getting the market vibe. Mm. Kick back, you graze. Frog and cheese. I'd be red wine or whiskey. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. There was sometimes some quite peculiar things. So our art department. Oh, we'll yes. quite often write things on menus. Um, you know, the graphic design people will put something on a menu somewhere um, just to make it look like it's real. But close up, <laughs> what they've written is sometimes quite horrifying. I think I think from Frodo, I'd probably just stick to a long black. Actually, probably the simpler the better for Frodo. I don't I don't necessarily trust him with my coffee order. It's the one he at least step up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Frodo. You guys said goodbye to a big character this season. What was that like? 
Uh, well, both <laughs> both times I got quite emotional. Seven seasons, seven years of you know working with those two people were um, yeah yeah it's uh, kind of moving and stuff. Yeah, it it actually surprised me how um, emotional I got about it because it sort of creeps up on you a bit. Um, I don't. I'm not very good at goodbyes. You're probably not very good at goodbyes either <laughs> at, at the best of times. Yeah. When you first started yeah. the meet started making the show seven years ago did you envision where you would be now absolutely no i i i, I remember uh, we were about two-thirds of the way through the first episode and uh the then producer did a we had uh, did a wee screening or cut of some of it and and i remember going oh is this what we're making yeah there yeah. was a, there was a moment where it was oh it's actually funnier than I thought it was yeah. going to be. Oh, my God! I'm so sorry! But, yes, I, I, I personally have been amazed that, uh, and very grateful how many uh, people like the show and, um, you know, get something from it. You know, I to be honest, I thought we were making something a little more darker and a bit more scandy and um, mm. all of that kind of thing. But once I got my head around the fact that it wasn't that, it had its own special flavor um i had i had a much better time <laughs> for one um and yeah it just things started falling into place and um i realized that it's very specific flavor is actually what makes it unique and sometimes it's good to not be making the thing that you have in your head so to add on to that you know you've been with those characters for a long time now do you have any specific hopes for your characters in future episodes yeah, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, that Ferns, um, that Kristen will finally make a decent coffee. The, <laughs> <laughs> I've often played around, I, I've often quite liked the idea that one day we'll have an episode where Mike gets flummoxed by it, and it's Kristen that gets the breakthrough, and that becomes some kind of crisis for Mike. Yeah, I don't, I just, well, as long as there's growth, some kind of forward momentum for Kristen then I'm 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 happier but I, I would hate for her to kind of get stuck. Do you both think you would make a good detective in real life? <laughs> uh, no I'd be terrible. I, I'd um I'd you know I'd leap to the first conclusion and go, yep yeah, that's right. No, it's this. Guilty. Case, case closed. Guilty. Next. <laughs> yeah. I'd be shocking. Yeah, I think the amount of wine I drank would get in the way of me being very effective <laughs> as a detective. But I, in saying that, I actually do think I'd be quite good because I am inherently nosy and I do like to get into other people's business and see what makes them tick. And Is it easy to slip back into character for both of you or have you ever questioned something in the script saying Mike wouldn't do that or Sims wouldn't say it like that? I, I find it quite easy to slip back into character I think um, and these, uh, there's one pair of shoes that Mike has that I put those on and I go oh oh yeah that's right and he, he walks just slightly differently to me yeah there's a, a few times that I've gone I don't really like actors that say oh my character wouldn't say that if that if you haven't tried it mm. yeah I similar I also have a pair of boots that Kristen wears that she's basically worn oh, yeah. Certainly from season two onwards, and those boots have been with me through some hard times <laughs> and some good times. Um, it's a miracle they're still even functional, the amount of beating they've taken. We had quite a few readers wanting to know if Neil really likes country music. Uh, you know, I've been asked this a few times. I like old country probably a bit more than traditional. I got uh, my, my partner dragged me to a Dolly Parton. Um, concert here a few years ago. Did you have to be dragged. Yeah, I, I'm not a big Dolly fan. I'm more at say Nick Cave. Yeah, um, <laughs> was that kind of Nick Cave? Oh, uh, yeah, that kind of a bit more old country. Um, I do like Johnny Cash though. Um, I'm a big fan of Johnny Cash. Fern, what what about you? What kind of music do you like to listen to? I like uh, a lot of. Um, I like a lot of everything, to be honest. Like, I really don't know how to answer that question. If you'd asked me if I'd like, if I liked country music in season one, I would have said 
a flat no, and I think mm. I did for quite some time. But now I'm sort of like, oh, yeah, you know, I like a bit of that. Just depends on what what mood I'm in, really. Here's one for Fern. Uh, can you make good coffee in real life? Absolutely. Yes, I make excellent coffee. Let it be known. That's just really good acting. <laughs> it's not real. It's pretend. Good grammar. Did oh, made that. Hmm. I'd be absolutely heartbroken if someone thought I made a bad coffee in real life. That would destroy me. <laughs> Another question for Fern: uh, Would you like to see your character have a serious relationship? No. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I want I want the best for her. I want her to be happy, and you know, um, being in a secure, loving relationship is certainly a way of achieving that. But um, but I like that. I want to normalize women being single and doing what they're doing. How would you describe Broken Wood in three words? Dark, murder, funny. My three also has the words murder in it. Is it all right? <laughs> it's uh, warm, murdery, <laughs> and unique. Is that the sound of a long bow being drawn, I hear? What makes Broken Wood special? There is a Māori proverb uh, that says, what is the most imp- important thing in the world? And the answer is, he tangata, he tangata, he tangata, which means the people, the people, the people. And, yeah. That's what makes it special. I couldn't have put it better myself, so I can't really add to it. Um, I would say also off-screen, um, the the people make the show what it is. All the crew, as we've already mentioned, they're, um, they're amazing human beings, um, and we owe a lot to them. Season 7 of The Brokenwood Mysteries is streaming now on Acorn TV. Please watch it. Give it a, give it a hoon, as yeah. we say in New Zealand. <laughs> I think you'll enjoy it. It's very murdery, warm and unique. Yeah. Hope you enjoy it.